Looks like somebody at Nikon screwed up and some D810s got out early. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to the Amateur Chat. This is your Thursday news edition, and I am once again here by myself. I'm starting to think Ryan really doesn't like doing the Thursday news. He always finds some way to get out of it. Um, not that it really matters. We got a little bit to talk about. It'll be a quick one today. First thing on the docket is I kind of like that. It kind of sounds like a quote. Anyway, first thing on the docket is that. There are already unboxing videos out there of the D810s, which aren't even supposed to ship until next week. Um, they're getting out literally a week ahead of time. There's already uh, an Instagram of a guy who got his D810 box in the mail. He's a filmmaker, so maybe he got it ahead of time as a special case. But there's an unboxing video in Czech, and also another one in some language I couldn't identify that's already out there, and I'm sure there's others already floating around, and Nikon's probably going to take them down as quick as they can, if, if they can. Just a heads up for anyone traveling into the U.S. right now, uh, the new laws, they've been talking about this on the news here a lot lately, um, but the TSA is enacting new rules that will require you, basically like, but basically really old rules, if I remember growing up right, you're going to have to be able to turn on your, like, from certain airports, you're going to have to be able to turn on your electronic equipment on flights inbound to the US. So if you've got a phone that doesn't work, that like the battery's dead, they're gonna confiscate it. And this is the local authorities in those countries that are doing it on behalf of the TSA here in the US. Um, definitely London Heathrow, it's already been reported that it's happening. So if you are bringing your electronic gear back into the US from overseas, make sure you've got everything charged up at least enough that you can turn it on and change the screen. I remember having to do this when I was younger, like 15, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, yeah, about 15 years ago, when I used to take my lap, you know, we used to have to take it, you take your laptop out, you'd have to open it up, turn on the screen, you know, and then close it. On my Palm Pilot, I'd have to do that. Your phone, you'd have to at least make it change what the screen said on it. Um, we've gotten away from that, but apparently they're going back to that. So just be on the lookout that they may ask you to turn on your equipment and make sure it works. I'm also kind of concerned about what that's going to mean for things like speed lights if you're traveling internationally with them. I don't even know if you can. I've never looked into it, but I assume you can because when they go through the x-ray, they just look like a big block where the capacitor block is. So I would be, if I find out any more about this, I will update all you guys right away. So here's something I thought was really, really cool. The BBC has opened up their internal training website for their journalists. The BBC College of Journalism, it's a live, not live, but constantly updated um, and archived system. They've got articles on how to use your cell phone to take appropriate pictures or video that would be suitable for showing on air, how to do interviews, how to do three-point lighting setups, how to use it. They've got articles on how to use a satellite phone in case you happen to be in a you know, unique situation where you have, that's your only line back. Um, they, and then a lot of stuff on the style guides they use for BBC on-air publications. So it's a very interesting uh, thing to take a look through. You have to know what you're looking for a little bit in order to really be able to navigate it. But I spent about half an hour looking at it today, well, maybe before I came on to record this. And I found so many cool articles that you never would have known about. I'll put links up to some of the more fun ones in the documentation, in the, in the, in the comments below. I got an email alert this week about a huge price drop on the Canon 7D. Now, it could just be that it came up in the cycle for things to get rebates in Canon. But as we all know, I love my, my rumors and I love to speculate on this stuff. But it's a $500 instant rebate. Now, typically when you see these big rebates, it's a mail-in or it's a smaller instant one as you know the manufacturers are trying to cycle inventory out. Uh, but a $500 instant rebate on the 7D and any kit based on the 7D, sounds like Canon wants to get them off the shelves. Again, just more fuel for the fire about this 7D Mark II coming out, which makes perfect sense because all the rumors still say it's gonna be announced by or at Photokina in September. So, not a surprise there that they're going to try and flush everything out now at the beginning of the summer, get people buying the 70s, 
and then the 72 will be ready to come out. It would be great. All right, we're seeing the first images coming out of production models of the Sigma Quattro DP2. Uh, first, I thought this was a really weird looking camera when they made it because it looks like something that I had as a kid that shot 110 film and just seemed very strange to me. Just it, 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 its styling is a little boxy. It's got a, a fixed lens on it. It seemed really kind of odd. But what they've done is actually kind of remarkable. They've put a new sensor where they've made some tweaks to it and they you know they went into some detail on their website about what this new Fulvian sensor does and how it's very different and it captures a lot more detail than other CMOS sensors. Apparently it captures upwards of 15% more luminous detail, you know, the fine black and white detail than uh, any of its predecessors that Sigma has put out in a camera, which is a huge jump. I mean, you think 15% doesn't sound like much, but when you're talking about detail, that's a lot. They put one of the first ones off the production line from the advanced production that got sent over for their uh, program on, you know, try it before you buy it. They put it in the hands of Jack Howard, who used to be the big photo reviewer over at photopop.com and sent him out to go take pictures with it. And the stuff he came back with was phenomenal. I mean, the, this lens is just, you know, they put a 30 millimeter lens. It's a, it's a crop sensor. So it's kind of a, I think they did the math. It's like a 54 millimeter equivalent. So it's a decent lens for, especially if you're only gonna have one prime lens, opens up to two eight. And the, the details that he has in the pictures, I, I printed them out to put them on here. Don't do it justice. You, got, you really got to look at it full size. They, they are absolutely stunning pictures. And at 2.8, you can get a great short depth of field. So in the right hands, that is probably going to be a great camera to play with. A uh, $1,000 price point putting me off a little bit for something that I can't change the lenses on. But if the quality is there, people will use it. And like I said, I, I, if I had put this on the more money than brain scale early, it would have gotten horrible scores. But now, that, you know, just on the, on the specs and the rumors, but actually seeing it out in the wild and hopefully I'll get my hands on one of them to play with it, it would probably score pretty well. So I'm, I'm excited about this, actually. When I originally, I was like, eh, now I'm very excited about it. And in the funny things you should do, um, there is now the world's smallest instant photo studio. With just 10 square feet of space for the entire studio, and it's not digital. This is an analog studio. So the guy is actually developing the film within those same 10 square feet. He's got a little teeny tiny dark room. This is basically where the, where the room closet is. It's, it's actually the dark room. It's absolutely tiny. But um, if you ever find yourself in the streets of I'm going to butcher this because I can't speak Norwegian. And I even asked one of the ladies in my office who is Norwegian to, to pronounce this for me. Tromsø, Norway? Hope I got that right. Um, you can find it. It's called Skipragata. It is an old coffee stand that they have converted into a fully enclosed, but almost completely windowed, so it's almost all natural light. Uh, photo studio there's no room for strobes or anything in there and they are only open for a couple hours in the afternoon when there are people around I mean they are north of the Arctic Circle so if you're going up there you can always get a hold of them um, they they have a website it's run by photographer I'm gonna get this wrong too because he's Norwegian Christian Gunderson I can spell I can pronounce Gunderson who is behind the uh, Films Not Dead movement. So that's why he's not doing it digital. And the translation of the, of the studio actually means the last stand when you translate it to English. So, and he said he's gotten up to 10 people in there to take a group shot, which I want to see that picture. That sounds absolutely obnoxious, but I want to read you the, the tagline off their, their website for this. So next time you happen to be in the Arctic Circle, you know, there's at least one place you can get an impromptu portrait session. It does sound like a fun place, and if I ever find myself on the 
north of the Arctic Circle in Norway, I will hunt this thing down because it sounds like fun. Like I said, a quick little news jaunt. That's all I've got for you today. Uh, tomorrow we'll be playing our games and challenges. Ryan will be back because I'm going to make him do something way out of his comfort zone and probably he'll do the same thing to me. Uh, I've got something kind of devious planned. It's not quite as bad as Know Your Photographer's Taglines, but it should be a lot of fun. We'll manage to fill up about 15 minutes with it and definitely worth watching and get your friends watching. So if you like what we're doing here, remember, we want this to be a conversation. Like, subscribe, share, post it all over your Twitter, your Facebook, whatever it is you're doing and get people watching. We try to make it entertaining. We try to, yeah, we do a lot of photo-centric stuff, but you know, it's easy for us to incorporate other things. So like with yesterday, when we were talking about renting equipment, you can tell me about anything you rented and, and we'll, we'll discuss that too, because you know, I don't know, someone could have rented a backhoe just to dig out their backyard. It sounds like fun to me. So just keep that in mind. You know, your questions don't have to be completely photo-related, though we do prefer those. And if you've got anything you want us to look at specifically, whether you've got questions about a piece of gear you're looking at buying or you want us to try and replicate how someone took a picture, let us know because that's, that's the kind of stuff we enjoy doing and it gets us interacting both ways. And uh, you guys are going to be very important in judging our contest tomorrow because we're going to pit against one another and we're not going to be able to pick a victor. It's going to be kind of like epic rap battles of history. We're going to put it to you guys to decide who the winner is. And on that note, I'll see you tomorrow.